sets our captain free. Hallelujah. There's a river of life flowing out of me. There's a river.
let the fire of your spirit reign. Let it pour. Lord, we need you more. Say that again. Let it pour. Let it pour.
and how he cleans his car and how he keeps everything in order. Uh, I know that I had an, had an occasion to travel with him and I do know that when he snores, he speaks in tongues when he sleeps. I do know that, uh, that uh, he could be walking, just, just walking down the sidewalk and say something to you uh, that may not be, you might not think it'd be a message, but it'd be a word from the Lord. And, you know, in the 23 years that I've known him, I would try to say that, well, you know, is he really a pastor? Because, you know, I come from the church where they put their finger in their ear, you know, and they do that kind of thing. And I used to sit there and say, well, when is he going to do that part? But I would leave the church all cut up from the word because that's exactly what I needed. And I could say a lot about this man of God, and you probably know already that he is a man of God. He's a, he's a voice. I say a voice for America. He's a voice that, you know, uh, you know, it's just going abroad all over the place. And, and uh, the God is using him in such a great way. And it's a great privilege and great honor to serve uh, this man of God. You know, some people, sometimes you, they, sometimes we don't really esteem those that we ought to honor, give them the proper honor that's due to them. Uh, you know, but... Uh, I don't know anybody tape that I would want to buy, anybody uh, gospel preacher that I would want to hear other than this man of God. You know, there's a lot of things I do listen and read about, and, but I think that, you know, his voice for me, and I don't know about for others, but I believe, that, I believe he's, got a vo he's got a message for America. He's got a message for the world. Praise the Lord. And, and it's an honor and a privilege to attempt to introduce him. But I believe that when, you, when he comes and stands forth, you would recognize this man, uh, the Apostle Joseph L. Sims, as the man of God. Praise God. Amen. Of us, and we're part of the kingdom. 
and whatever she goes through, we go through. You understand? So we want to help our sister in the Lord. I'm going to, I said I was going to share and ask him to speak in my place 15 minutes of apostolic order. And you know, today, not just the church, but the whole world is messed up. We have a reversal of roles between the husbands and wives. You understand? In the Bible we talked about last night, the head of Christ was God the Father. The head of the man was Jesus. And the head of woman was the man. Now, headship means more than being a boss. The word exousia power means that there's ability and authority to be a covering. That's something that God ordained in the relationship. But now if we look at the relationship at home, man's supposed to be the foundation, the head. <laughs> That's messed up. In the church, we have the bishops as the head. Uh, now, now, this is sort of funny. You understand, here's a foundation that was ordained, and laid. And then the church fathers made a twist and put the bishops as a head, eliminated the apostles and prophets, and then we go along like, this is right, but it's not so. So if the bishops are in charge and they were not called or chosen of God, then what about the rest of us? If we wipe out the apostles and the prophets, then we also wipe out the gifts of tongues, the, the fivefold ministry, all of them are out of alignment, you understand? And so what we have today as a church is out of order. And the bishops did not come first. They, they came on later on because everything else is in place. But Apostle Sterling's coming and he's going to give us 15 minutes of the order of the bishop because this is a thing that a lot of us don't understand. And I thank God for the bishops that we have here now. Uh, let me say something about uh, Bishop Prather. Bishop Prather is just temporarily a bishop. I can't put her right now where I need to put her because y'all ain't ready. You follow me? But as soon, look at your neighbor and say, as soon, I wish I could sing, put, I wish I could, get, <laughs> I, I, I wish I could sing it. As soon as we get the attitude of the people right, we're going to put Bishop Prather where she's supposed to be. She's ready. Look at your neighbor and say, she's ready. Y'all ain't ready. Now, you remember Paul said that some things I can't say yet because you ain't ready yet. Debbie Teasley's ready too. I mean, Pastor Teasley's ready too. But I got to keep her close right now. She's doing another work for me. And Apostle Sterling, please come. Now listen, I don't want you to mess with this man. He ain't been saved all his life. My son come home one day, he said, he said, wasn't that a Paul, that brother Sterling, Michael Sterling the pulpit? He said, yeah. He said, Daddy, I saw him hit a man one time. You could hear it all the way across the park. <laughs> he said, he said, he said, well, it's good to have him on your side. <laughs> I praise God today. Amen. Praise God. Give an honor to God. My father, amen, in the ministry, Apostle Joseph L. Sims. All the ministers on the rostrum. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. DOC, the Honorable Pastor Debbie Teasley, and you, the saints of the Most High God. I take carefully these 15 minutes. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I think my father was saying that the church is out of order, and not only the church, society is out of order. See, when you become, amen, a leader, Amen. The Bible says you have your quiver full of arrows. And so, uh, amen, praise God, you're able to pull them at your will. Amen, praise God, like uh, Clinton when he was in office. Amen, he was able to call for the Secretary of State for certain functions because they were experts in that field. Amen, praise God, hallelujah, agriculture. Amen, praise God, experts, war, experts in that field. 
Amen. And so God has given me a word. Uh, amen. Praise God in setting the church in order. Amen. And so my father, amen, has called me, amen, to admonish you, provoke you to think. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And to examine yourself and examine the word of God according to what I'm about to tell you. Everything I'm going to tell you is scriptural, but you must first understand that we're out of order. I was at a conference, a men's conference, amen, several months ago. Amen, praise God, hallelujah. And I was telling the men, the number one thing that's wrong is you're still trying to get in touch with your feminine side. Somebody done tricked you into thinking you got a feminine side. And so some of you men are still trying to get in touch with something that God took out. I think her name was called Eve. And you got some psychic neck with some knucklehead telling you that you need to get in touch. He was telling you you need to get married or a wife, I guess. But some of you <laughs> was trying to get in touch with your feminine side and it was taken out. So next time you hear a brother <laughs> talking about our sister trying to tell a man you need to get in touch with Joe. I am, you it. <laughs> praise, praise the Lord. <laughs> hallelujah. So that's how out of order we are. We just all messed up. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so now God is calling for some divine order. Amen. To come back into the church and come back into the world. But it must first start in the house of God. Because God wants to use the church as a measuring stick for the world and that's why it says that judgment must first begin at the house of God but well, God can't have judgment until he brings order because we're going to be the measuring stick by which he judges everything are you understanding what I'm saying today amen praise God I'm Michael and the things I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you for the glory of God but you can truly understand something amen praise God hallelujah I'm Michael Paul Sterling our doctor Michael Paul Sterling, apostle of the Most High God. Amen, praise God, hallelujah, for God's glory. God has blessed me to have 23 churches, amen, in Nigeria, two in Kenya, and about four churches in Northern California, and two down in Southern California. Amen, praise God, but it's for the glory of God. I'm telling you these things for you can understand that I used to be nobody, nothing. Until God picked me up and he started to use me and to mold me. Are you understanding what I'm saying? But as a mighty man of God and a powerful man of God whom God made me because I'm strong in his strength. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I'm mighty in his power. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I place myself up under headship and the leadership of a father, Apostle Joseph L. Sims, because I need divine order in my life, we need divine order in the church, and we need it in the ministry. Amen, praise God. I was telling the saints of the Most High God that there's been a power shortage, amen, in, in California and across the country. This is significant of the power shortage, amen, praise God, that's in the church. Amen, praise God. Everyone knows there's something wrong in the church. If you know anything about the word of God and you've been looking, you know we don't have the power, amen, that we're supposed to have. We have a farm. Oh, we dance real good. Come on, help me now. We dress good. We sing good. We clap. We shout. We almost touch the roof. And we have a residue anointing where God's grace just comes and just, look at my children. They're so out of order, but I'm loving them anyway here. Heal that. <laughs> Miracle that. Amen. Let them, okay. Amen. But just a residue anointing. It's not the full weight and the glory and the power that God had tended for us to have. And the reason is because we're out of order. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm writing a book, and in the book, amen, it's called Upon This Rock. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I've just concluded the book. I just got to get it, amen, edited and published. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it's called Upon This Rock. In the book of Matthew 16 and 18, amen, the Bible says, Upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen, praise God, hallelujah. Well, God, amen, was building the church upon a revelation of who Christ was or who he was. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And Peter acknowledged and recognized, amen, praise God, the Christ, the Messiah. And he said, now upon this revelation, upon this rock, I'm going to build my 
church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, even though he said that, amen, praise God, he already had an architect in mind. Amen. Praise God. His architect that he had in mind that would put the precepts, amen, together, line upon line and precept upon precept, here a little and there a little, was a young, amen, Pharisee. Amen. Praise God. That was studying at the college of the feet of Gamaldi. Amen. Praise God. His name was Saul of Taurus. He was valedictorian of his class. Amen. Praise God. And God would use him to literally set. Amen. Praise God. The principles, the precepts. Amen. Praise God. And the formation of the church. Amen. In order. It was Paul that would come and put everything together. Paul says in 1 Corinthians. Amen. 3 and 10. According to the grace that is given unto me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation. Now let everyone take heed how they build thereupon. For there's no other foundation that can be laid than it is Christ Jesus. Uh, amen, praise God. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, amen, praise God, hallelujah. Amen, that the foundation of the church uh, was built upon the bishops. It's not the word. The word of God says, amen, praise God, hallelujah. In uh, 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 Ephesians uh, chapter 2, you are no more strangers and foreigners, 19 and 20, but fellow citizens with the saints and the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostle and the prophet, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So this divine order that's already been placed, amen, praise God, in church law or church history, amen, praise God, that we should follow. But what happened during the book of Acts when Stephen was killed or martyrized, amen, the church became scattered. Somebody say all things are working together for the good. No, no, say it like you mean it. All things work together for the good. See, in the midst of chaos, God has plan, order, and design. What the enemy means for bad, God turns around for good. And so even though the church was being scattered, amen, God said, well, let us scatter. Amen, praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to do an in-gathering. Amen. I'm going to bring it back together. Now, when it was scattered, what started to happen was, amen, praise God, there was a systematic attack against the apostolic order. Amen, praise God, but they started to kill and imprison, amen, people like Peter, amen, and Paul, and Matthew, and Mark, and Luke, and systematically bring out the government of the church. Amen, praise God, hallelujah. Why? Because the deacons were even being empowered. People like Stephen, the anointing was so heavy. Come on, help me now. See, see the anointing that we're looking for, we're calling for revival, we're calling for this. Revival means wake up that which was dead. Shake it or rattle it, do whatever you have to do, prophesy to it, but to wake up that which was dead, bring it back forth. So we're calling for revival, but we're not in order, and God can't revive until you the bones start shaking together and coming together. Come on, help me now. According to Ezekiel the prophet, amen, in 37, it says, first, there must be a prophecy, and then you're going to hear a noise, and then there must be a shaking. Come on, everything that can be shaken got to be shaken. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Amen. Praise God. And once everything is shaken up, then it can start coming together. Are, are you understanding what I'm saying? Amen. So in order to have the exousius power, the deutimus power that we lack and that we're looking for, we have to come back into order. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Divine order. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so what has happened is when a church was scattered and they started taking out the apostolic government and the mantle of the church, amen, praise God. Hallelujah. You have to understand that Paul, amen, praise God, was knowledgeable and had great understanding in Judeo principles. Amen. He was a study, study, he studied the Torah and the Pentateuch. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And had a concise and precise understanding thereof. Amen. Praise God. Being a Bible and a road scholar himself. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, what happened was this, and listen carefully. The Jews started being saved. And as they started coming to the church, they started bringing Judeo principles into the church. Are you understanding? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And then idolatry. First, I got our out of the way. Come on, help me now. I put Paul in prison. I put John on the Isle of Patmos. I turned Peter upside down, tried to make him deny him. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I, I, and I did all type of things to bring the order of God away. And then, amen, praise God, Judaism started systematically coming into the church. Paul's letter to the church of Galatia was, Oh, foolish Galatians, who's bewitched you? 
See, he's talking to you today. Who's bewitched you, church? Some of you know that you're reading things that you're not seeing. Some of you have enough sense in this year, in this age, that you're reading things in the Bible and you're wondering why it's not happening. Amen. On the scale, amen, that it was because the power was so great under apostolic order that Stephen, who was a deacon, admonished the Pharisees, told them their history all the way from Abraham to Moses to them Christ whom they crucified. And he, amen, was Saul doing great wonders and miracles. Now you understand what I'm saying? Philip, another deacon, was being translated, amen, praise God, where he was talking to a, 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 a Judeo priest. Amen, praise God. That was coming all the way from Africa. Amen, praise God. And was reading the Torah. Come on, help me now. And he was reading about the Savior that was supposed to come. And then this deacon, come on, help me. Because there's power coming down from headship. And because things are in order. And so now even this deacon is translated by supernatural power. And he catches up with the coach. Tells, amen, praise God, hallelujah. The Ethiopian eunuch, do you know what you're reading? And he says, no, but he gives him revelation insight because he's in apostolic order. Somebody say apostolic order. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so he tells uh, this deacon, I mean, he tells this Ethiopian eunuch, amen, praise God, the rhema word of God. Amen. Praise God. And the deacon and the Ethiopian eunuch said, there's some water right there. Can I get baptized? I'm trying to tell you that the power was so great. That was coming down, that was funneling down, amen, from the headship down Aaron's beard. Amen, praise God. So now Catholicism starts to... So now Jude, Judaism mixed with Christianity and some idolatry turned into what we know now as Catholicism. And when Catholicism came in, they came in with the broad sword and tried to take the world by the physical sword and turn them into what they called the church or the mother church. They did away with the apostles and the prophets. Amen, praise God. They took the pastors, put them on the shelf, and brought back the priesthood. Amen, praise God. Then they made archbishops, bishops, and canons. Amen, and some friars, and I guess some tucks. Amen, praise God. And, and set them in order. Come on, help me. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm telling you history. Amen, Fox's Books of Martyrs talks about, amen, the killing and the slaughter of every spirit-filled believer during those days that we call the Dark Ages. But it's when the church was taken out of apostolic and prophetic order. Amen. And then there was a young man named Martin Luther. He came along. And Martin Luther, amen, said something's wrong with this picture. I'm talking to people that know the Bible. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. He says, wait a minute. Hold it. You're talking about by works, but the just shall live by faith. So he went to Winnenberg, Germany to cathedral and, and tacked the 39 pieces upon the wall that the just shall live by faith. Are you understanding? And that started the Reformation movement. This Martin Luther was a prophet. Amen. That was pointing divine direction. Amen. Praise God. In the way the church could go. Amen. Praise God. Now I want to make this concise. Amen. Praise God. For you'll get the point. I need to lay that foundation. Amen. So then, amen, as we start to turn the corner and reformation starts to happen, we're still in reformation. That's right. That's right. Tell your neighbor that you're still in reformation. We're completing the process. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the master's name of Jesus. Amen. But all things work together for the good. Thank God for the Baptist. Thank God for everything that happened. Because God had a perfect plan. Now it's time for the ingathering. Amen. Praise God. So Martin Luther led the way as a prophet of God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Then they started letting pastors back in. Amen. It was okay to be a pastor. And then, amen, as they turned the corner, it was okay to be an evangelist. Come on, help me now. The evangelical movement started happening. Amen, praise God, hallelujah. And then, amen, they said, well, we'll let a few people go out and teach. And amen, bring some teachers back in. But they left the two brothers out the house. Amen, the apostles and prophets. They said, there's no such thing. Amen, praise God, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. But then, amen, praise, the prophets started going forward and the prophetic movement just started flowing. And I'm talking about things started happen by people prophesying. And they said, we can't keep the door of the prophets locked because there's too many people coming forward and God is upholding their words. Amen. So we can no longer trick the people into thinking there's no prophets in the land. Amen, because the prophetic and prophets are going forward with power and authority. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So then, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. The prophet started coming back, but it's kind of hid, 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 hid away a little bit. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Amen. Praise God. And then they started pointing the way toward the apostles. Now what happens is this. Amen. Praise God. It's a matter of power. 
Somebody say it's about power. See, when Jesus first came in, amen, and started doing his great work, amen, praise God, the reason the assault, somebody say assault, upon his ministry, upon his personage was so great. How many people are waiting on us to display what we talk about? That power that we have that we lock it up at the church when we leave. People, as much as we hug each other, something ought to rub off. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow one river Ooh, of see when we get filled with the holy spirit of god zoe life takes off that's life as god knows it zoe life is capable listen to me of causing life amen we have zeal but when we get a hold of zoe it, it causes life to spring out in jay yeah, come on, we're, we're, we're living stones, we're lively stones, you understand. Uh, we have a hookup that's divine in order, amen. But many of us, because of our faith and not knowing how to release the anointing and release the power of God, right now we allow people to die and to wither, but we're supposed to be living trees. We're supposed to have leaves that will not wither. We're supposed to have a fruit on us that other people can just take and we can uh, take care of them. We, yeah, no, come on, talk to me. Pastor Teeley, I don't know. I think sometimes we need to shut the doors to the church, lock everybody inside, tie those up that we know going to run away. You understand? We just tie them up and make them stay there until they get the real Holy Ghost. You understand? Because some of us seek the Lord until we get tired. We already know how long we're going to pray. We already prescribe our fast. We're going to fast three days. And, and, and the devil just sat there and wait till we fast our three days. And then he just take over where he left off. Because you didn't fast through. We praise the Lord till we get tired. We don't praise through. We pray till we get tired. And we don't pray through. We need to pray through, praise through, fast through. Until we can get what we need from God. How many of us would have been able to wait? How long was it that they had to wait in the upper room? How many would wait 40 days for the Lord to come and fill you with the Holy Spirit again? This is it right now. I want this year when you go home to make a difference. It's between you and God. But I want to charge you before God that you begin to release the Holy Spirit where you live, where you work, in the neighborhood I coached baseball for years and you know what we never had an injury oh we had a lot of them get hit upside the head with a hardball but I was able to know that I had the power of God in my life I said be still son let me just just quit crying right now I know there's gonna be a knot there but it ain't gonna hurt no more in this game you get back up there and hit that ball I did like all coaches when they went into the play I patted them up go boy but my hand was anointed. I got so caught up with it, I coached three teams in one year. Farm league, minor league, and major league. Knowing that I was a preacher making a difference in those young men's lives. One year I was pastoring. After I was pastoring, this big burly guy came and he grabbed me and he, he hugged me and threw me up in the air. And he kissed me. I said, man, who are you? He said, I'm Royce Williams. Royce Williams was the baddest kid on the team. Whenever we sold candy, he would steal the candy and put rocks in the box. <laughs> now, anointing don't mean you're crazy. Look at your neighbor. Anointing don't mean you're crazy. Because I took my team one day. Now, this is, this is comical, all right? I'm, 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 I took my team up one day to the zoo. They went out the zoo, went out the back of the zoo and found a snake. And I, I worked graveyard. So Ross thought it was funny. 
he got him a snake on a stick. Mr. Sim, look, 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 and dropped the snake in front of me. But I didn't see the... <laughs> I was sleeping on my baseball bag. Had a bat in it. <laughs> I converted Royce that day. Because <laughs> the snake that he bought for me, I hit him in the leg and he fell on the snake. And the glory to God. We had a glorious time in the Lord. <laughs> but it made a difference in those young men's lives. They come by my house. They come by the office to see Mr. Sims, the mean coach that loved them so much. Understand me something now, people, and I want you to get the seriousness of this. I feel like God, when he told Samson to shake yourself, we need the power of God. Our churches need the power of God. We need the vision of God. We are bringing ourselves into order, and I know the manifestation of the Holy Spirit and the manifestation of Christ is going to rise up in our sanctuary. I know that God is holding pastors now accountable for the first time. Not for the first time, we just ignored it. You understand? We figure everybody else is out messing around with other women, we can do the same thing and, and keep on pastoring. Nobody's going to say, no, no, no. We have to come into accountability now. And we have to require others around us to come into accountability. Come on, talk to me. I drove all the way across the United States once because the Lord told me there was a man sleeping with, with his secretary. When I confronted him, I said, listen, the Lord says you will not sleep with her anymore. You put her out of your house and you bring your wife back into the house. He asked me by what authority because I was not his pastor. I was not his covering. I was not his apostle. I said, but divine authority. Divine authority goes way beyond denominational authority. Come on. He makes a promise to the church. Whatever you bind on earth is going to be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is going to be loosed in heaven. I, w I live by that premise. I have to live by the word of God. I can't live by anything else. I can't live by speculation. If God won't let me look at a, what kind of R-rated movie. What, come on. Because he says you've entered into pornography. You've entered into fornication. If you look up on a naked woman, you've entered into it. You cannot do that. Somebody said it's holding the cell. That's what they used to tell us. And they would keep on sleeping around. So it was for you to be holy, not me. But no, it starts at the pulpit. It starts at the pulpit. I found one of the churches that I came out of, and one of the old pastors came to me. He said, the reason the church is so messed up. You understand? He said, once we had a brother that we had sat on and said, you cannot preach. The bishop told us it was all right for him to preach. And from there on, the whole church became contaminated. And it's still operating today in that contamination. Because it was allowed for the head of the church to preach and spew out his lust upon the congregation. We have folks going still there to one of the biggest churches in the world. When God has put Ichabod over the door. What amazes me is how you think you're going to be raptured. And go to heaven anyhow. When you've been violating the word of holiness. Without holiness no man shall see the Lord. No man shall see the Lord. Without holiness no man shall see the Lord. Baby, look at, look at your neighbor. It's time to go back to holiness. It's time to go back to holiness. What time is it? Oh. <laughs> Understand me. I don't care what clothes you have on. It's just as long as you got dressed in the presence of the Lord. You understand? If God lets you away from that mirror <laughs> with the stuff you wear to church, I'm, I ain't going to argue with you. That's between you and God. I'm not going to take the work of the Holy Spirit. But this morning, I wore what I wore yesterday. I said, Lord, I wore this yesterday. He said, shut up and put it on. He told me something else. He said, when you go home, get rid of all that junk in your closet. 
I have another wardrobe I want you to wear. See, a lot of times we dress to attract attention to ourselves. <laughs> Sometimes we can't even clap a hand because we got on so many rings. I tried it. I know y'all jiving because that hurt. That hurt. Can't close your eyes because you have so much... Somebody said I'm meddling. Can't dance because you're already cramped up in them high heel shoes. Can't get with it. Can't turn yourself loose in the church because you have to cover the gates of hell. And we call this fashion show church. So the Holy Spirit said, I want you to dress this way. Every Sunday I go to church, the Lord says, no, don't take that off. I don't want you to, because especially when I'm ministering, he said, take it off. I said, God, I said, this black suit, I am so sick of this black suit. He said, put it on, because I've consecrated it. He said, if you're going to do my work, I want you to put on that suit. Now, if he's telling me that, Okay, let's just, let's, y'all want scripture on this, right? When you look in that mirror, there's supposed to be a reflection. I got a message I'm putting together now on reflections. When you go look in that mirror and you see yourself, then you didn't dress in the spirit. You're supposed to see Jesus in that mirror. In that way, we're changed into his image changed into his image we look into a glass am I making any sense to us and then we got the nerve to talk to some poor girl that can't afford nothing but a $13 Kmart dress and tell her baby your dress is too short leave the girl alone or go buy some clothes Come on, trees. Let's talk about it. J. Uh, prosperity. Ellen McGinnis, prosperity. Uh, <laughs> ooh, I thank God for revelation once because we used to have a church bus. What the Lord told us? Quit driving the bus and buy the people cars so they can drive. So we got a bus at the church and we only use it for what? <laughs> huh? I wish Sister Ben Sims wouldn't try to buy everybody in the church a car. You understand? But the people need help. But if you're a tree and you're broke, how can you help them? I'd made it up my mind I was going to send Pastor Teasley my van. And anybody know my van? That's my chariot. That's, that's my rapture wagon. That's... Ooh. I said, Lord, I don't know if she's going to want to drive my van with cam and, 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 and a stereo with how many speakers? Twelve speakers on there, we understand, and headers and all that stuff. I don't know if she want to pull the stop sign and loping and carrying on ready for a race. I said, well, Lord, I just can't see her in my van. Oh, thank God for some brothers said, listen, I got a car. We're going to give it to her. And I'm talking too much. You understand? I thank God I get to keep my van. Hallelujah. Now, I know she'd enjoy the motorcycle. Maybe I should have gave her the motorcycle. <laughs> Glory to God. It's time for us now to turn our hearts toward the Lord. In seriousness now. I want to lay hands upon the apostles. Elders, are y'all ready? Now, what the Bible says, uh, you just give me a few moments here, okay? I know we didn't shout and dance like y'all like to leave the place, but uh, we have to put some things in order. Ain't no sense in anybody coming here wanting to be healed and go home unhealed. Come on, talk to me. 
in our training in this organization we're going to start telling the people when they prophesy prophesy the word not your emotion not your feelings so a lot of times we prophesy we prophesy our hurt and our pain and we see I hurt and some other person we start talking about well God say you're abusing your wife no 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 you you prophesy and you're hurt we need to prophesy the word of God because the word of God is what's going to free people just like our praying the word of God is going to free people when you see or hear what the Lord said about a disease then you speak to that disease and tell it to be gone in the name of Jesus and be healed so we're going back to scripture to live holy Come on, talk to me. I heard a man today talking about us in the restaurant. Yeah, them's holy rollers. I wanted to say, brother, well, what kind of ruler are you? If God is holy, and these are holy rollers, then what are, who, who are you rolling with? It's time for us to make a change in our neighborhood. I've heard of some of the neighborhoods in, in this city. But you have the power. What was that you did? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. I walk every morning and I bind the evil principalities over our city. I walk and I bind the rulers of the darkness of our city. Why? Because I don't want the city I live in to have certain spirits. In this area, you're still dealing with slave spirits. You're still dealing with racism. You're still dealing with the spirit of poverty. How come some of y'all ain't out there praying? That's why God sent you here to bind that thing. And to loose it. You're supposed to break the bands of wickedness. That is wicked. He didn't place you here to submit to it and to surrender to it. There should be a hatred for it. There should be a foolish anger in you for that kind of thing. To break that power, to bind that evil principality, to bind the, the spirit of the Antichrist. Do you understand? Bind the spirit of the abomination of desolation. Learn how to pray in the spirit and bind those things so the people of God can go free. Cut them prayer meetings out praying for cars and houses and cars and husbands. I'm mad then, I'm sorry. Elders, I want you to come. Now what the Bible says is for the person that has a sickness to call for the elders. Now I'm not naive enough to... I believe that the Holy Spirit in you is going to identify the people that have the healing for your sickness. I believe that. I believe that. Do you, do you, if you agree with me, say yes. I believe that the elders have the power of God because they're walking in obedience to the word of God today to lay hands on those persons that are sick and they will be healed. So we're asking the elders to come to the front. You that are sick in your bodies, we want you to come. I'm talking about really sick. I'm not talking because you're over eight. You, am I making any sense? Now there's some of you in this line that are sick. I want you to turn and face that, the people that are praying and ask the elders, please come and pray for me now. And heal me of that sickness, that disease. Hallelujah. On this side, on over here. Are there any singers left? Oh, well, oh. Pastor Tila can sing for us. And I want the apostles and the prophets to come. I want to lay hands on you.